So we continue 1989 in a day. Um, September 8 of the year 1989, the Ruch Constituent Congress, a precursor to the collapse of the Soviet Union. I feel tempted to add a question mark, but here it is meant as a statement, a precursor to the collapse of the Soviet Union. In conversation today, we have uh, Katarina Ruban, PhD candidate in history at uh, NYU. And currently, I might add uh, our junior visiting fellow at uh, the IWM. Very good that you can join us for this. And uh, Volodymyr Kulik uh, from the National Academy of Sciences in Kiev. Also, very big welcome to you. And we do, as before, it's up to you who starts. Uh, my original suggestion was that the younger generation should, o should always start. But I guess you have talked about it already. So do it your own way, please. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to uh, to think about this event and to to uh, uh, remind them for for me. Um, I don't have uh, any exact uh, memories of this day because I was uh, just four years old, uh, but uh, thinking about this period uh, reminded me the. Uh, remind me the atmosphere I remember very well, the atmosphere uh, of the days, of the last years of the Soviet Union. Uh, it was because um, uh, my parents, um, especially my father, he was uh, uh, a friend of uh, one of the guys who would become one of the leaders of Ruch, uh, Ivan Zayets. And uh, I, would, uh, I, uh, I used to spend a lot of time in this uh, um, building which was a dormitory of the Academy of Sciences uh, uh, of Ukrainian uh, of Soviet Ukrainian Academy of Sciences and uh, I definitely remember very well the atmosphere uh, which was there it was the uh, atmosphere of uh, excitement of people who um, who felt themselves uh, as a new political I wouldn't say like political power, but they uh, were very excited about uh, doing something to change the situation they were living in. Um, uh, and I remember uh, a lot of faces uh, of people who were, um, who were uh, a lot of people who were living uh, at this kind of um, small um, dormitory, kind of like on outskirts of the city, and the living conditions were quite poor, but the people still ha had a lot of um, um, joy and uh, a lot of inspiration at that time. Um, and I'm actually happy that uh, I still remember this, uh, this atmosphere and this energy for changes that was uh, uh, there, in, um, I, I think it was in the years uh, of the uh, of the Ruch uh, uh, Congress, and also uh, I remember very well the first elections, which were in the 1990, because my father worked for this uh, guy Ivan Zaitz, who, who was later elected. Uh, so basically, uh, I just remember the faces, and uh, I wanted to ask you, Vladimir, can you uh, uh, tell a little bit more about who were these people? who made possible the, uh, the Ruch Congress? Who were these people who, um, who, who made possible Ruch in general, the Ruch movement in general? Uh, yeah, uh, I remember those days vividly. I was uh, at the Congress, uh, and there were three days of enthusiasm, of speeches, of standing up and applauding, almost like in the US Congress, you know, uh, Americans differ from Europeans in, 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 in the frequency, the willingness, the eagerness, I would say, of, of standing ovations, you know. Uh, we, we don't do that that much. We, we do not mind uh, remain, uh, remaining seated when, 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 uh, when applauding. And so, but uh, the, the atmosphere at the uh, founding Congress of Ruch was uh, such that it was impossible to remain seated when you, when you were applauding because you were enthusiastically applauding. And in a way, uh, that continued the atmosphere of the whole year. Uh, th that year was the year of many events like that, uh, of which uh, the, the founding Congress of Ruch was the most famous, the most uh, important politically and symbolically, but it continued uh, uh, this chain of events. Uh, in February that year, there was the founding Congress of the uh, 
uh, Association of Ukrainian Language. In uh, July, there was the founding congress of the Kyiv Regional Organization of the of, of Ruch, and 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 many uh, many. Um, uh, uh, meetings in between. I remember going to the Writers Union uh, that year very often. To me, it was a period when I was living in a dorm, not far from, from that one which, which you uh, describe. I was between marriages and uh, temporarily free with lots of time on my hands and all, uh, almost every evening I was, I was able to go someplace, you know, and, 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 and there were places to go. And, 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 and uh, it, it seemed impossible not to go there because it, was, it seemed so significant, you know, to be there, to listen to those speeches, to applaud there, uh, and to sing often, uh, standing, of course. And um, uh, that was the year uh, when the territory of freedom expanded by, by the hour, uh, the territory of uh, control of the, of the Communist Party control was shrinking by the hour. So the party was fighting back, uh, but it was, it was losing. It was, it was, um, it was uh, giving more and more space to opposition. And, 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 and to your question, who, who were these people? It started with the writers. The writers were uh, having two uh, uh, very important qualities which uh, made them primary. Uh, kind of doers of, 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 of that action. First, uh, they had uh, a recognized autonomous space within the system. They were one of these official unions. Uh, there were unions of writers and architects and, and, and composers and, and artists, but the writers were uh, most active, most vocal. They were writers, yeah? They, 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 it was their job to talk and, and, and to write. And um, they had their own, uh, their own newspaper, which was censored, uh, but which was uh, uh, recognized in, in their right to, uh, to raise voices on many socially important things. Of course, they were expected to do that within the limits established by the party, but when they are starting to expand in those limits, to push, to push in, uh, to, uh, to, uh, when they are starting to push, the party uh, did not uh, necessarily crush them. The party tried to, 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 to argue with them, the party tried to, to, to uh, limit them somehow, and of course, uh, that was the, the year and part of a, of a longer chain of, of events which started in other parts of the USSR. Ukraine was, was one of the uh, more retrograde uh, conservative republics with party control stronger than elsewhere, with repressions lingering longer than elsewhere. Uh, it, it started uh, uh, in two places primarily, in the Baltics and in Moscow. In Moscow, they were allowed to do much more than in Ukraine, and and, and there was a, there was a proverb when 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 when, um, uh, when in Moscow they are they are, they are uh, cutting nails in Ukraine, they are cutting fingers, you know. Uh, so the repressions were, of course, always much stronger in, in the 20s, in the 30s, in the, in the 50s, in the, in the 70s, and in, in even in the late 90s, the, 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 the party uh, uh, control was was tighter than than. But the uh, example of the bolts uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the Moscow Center uh, uh, meant that the party could not really crush uh, uh, every opposition ruthlessly. Yeah? So the party gradually conceded. So, uh, and one important advantage, uh, another important advantage uh, to, to, to the Writers' Union was they had their own building, downtown Kiev. All these meetings were happening there, in, 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 in that building. Uh, first, they, they were kind of writers' meetings, proper readings of, of, of a poetry, or, or, um, uh, of a new book of poetry by some writer, or a new book, a book of prose. Then, gradually, it was, um, it was meet, um, kind of meetings with the audience, yeah, with the readers. And then, and then more and more than this uh, association of Ukrainian language, then, uh, 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 and then Ruch. Everything started there. In, in rather small, um, something like, like this, maybe just a little bit uh, larger um, hall, uh, but, uh, but, but people knew that was the place to go. The, uh, and, 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 and many events were happening there. Then, uh, gradually, that, that hall became small, and uh, the founding congress happened in, 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 in a congress hall of the Kyiv Polytechnical University, 
which was maybe 10 times bigger than this. Yeah? Uh, so, so many people were to be accommodated there. But uh, the writers channeled this, op this expanding uh, opposition, expanding territory of freedom through this uh, tumultuous year because they had this recognized autonomy, uh, so they could not be suppressed ruthlessly from the beginning. They had their own newspaper, which, which reached uh, uh, readers which reach the, the, the active citizens across the Republic, and they, they had this building downtown Kiev. That's, that's very important, uh, three assets, yeah? Uh, who joined them? Uh, joined them um, intelligentsia, creative, artistic, but also engineers, scientific intelligentsia. If, if you look at the um, uh, composition of the Ruch membership, uh, there were many more engineers than workers, for example. Of course, there were lots of scientists, uh, there, were, there were lots of writers, and uh, founding positions, uh, uh, dominant position in, in the founding uh, uh, membership of the um, how it called, bureau, whatever it was called, uh, belonged to, uh, to, to, to writers. And, and, and finally, one uh, uh, last but not least part of, the, of this membership was dissidents, former Soviet dissidents who were released uh, from, from prisons and, and, and exiles a year or two years before that who were much more radical, uh, in, in, but uh, prevented from expressing publicly their position in, 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 in that hierarchy of things, and who got this channel of expressing their views thanks to writers. Writers gave them uh, access to, to their meetings, where uh, they were dissidents and critics of the, of the moderate writers, and, 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 but, but, um, and finally, uh, Ruch was where the two parts joined. Uh, established, recognized opposition with, as I call it in one of my um, one of my articles, opposition within the regime, and opposition from the outside of the regime. They joined there, and that, and they created what what we know as Ruch. Yeah, and here uh, I just uh, want to also to add, because I think it's important for understanding what was going on there, that uh, those writers, they, they were also the members of the party, and they were also the uh, deputies, the members of the Soviet parliament at the, at the time. So basically we can call them kind of like uh, Soviet uh, political power, Soviet political elite at that time when they, when they were at Ruch. And I think also it's a very important fact uh, that uh, uh, Leonid Kravchuk himself, uh, who was the, at the time, the head of this so-called uh, ideological department, uh, and he was a very important figure in the Ukrainian uh, Communist Party, so he himself came to, to this Congress. Do you think um, this, uh, wh what did uh, uh, his uh, appearance at, uh, at this Congress, what did it show uh, to the people who came there? Uh, Again, it, it, it was a mixture of control and recognition. Uh, Kravchuk, uh, in a way, was making his own stellar career, uh, thanks to Ruch. Uh, he was in charge of, of controlling Ruch, of containing Ruch, but at the same time, he, um, he demonstrated his um, ability to communicate with them, to negotiate with them. It was not just suppressing them. Uh, some hardliners within the Communist Party uh, uh, didn't, didn't have those communicative capacity because the commun Communist Party didn't really need to communicate. It, 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 it only needed to dictate, it needed to forbid uh, um, uh, and, and to control. Yeah? Kravchuk was one of those who, who knew how to talk. Uh, who knew how to listen and, and, and who demonstrated that. And in this new environment, this ability be became a, a, an important asset and, 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 and thanks to that, he ended up being Ukraine's first president just two, two, two years later, yeah? So uh, during that year, he kept communicating with Ruch at all these stages. In late, uh, in late um, January, uh, the uh, Writers' Union published uh, in, in, in its newspaper, Literaturna Ukraina, the draft of the, uh, of, of the program of Ruch. And, and that was a major concession of the Communist Party. And Kravchuk negotiated that. So how to ensure that there was nothing subversive, really, really dangerous to the regime in, in, in that Ruch, in, the, in that draft which was to be published in the censored publication, uh, let's, let's recall that the censorship was abolished uh, a year later, in, in, in 
July 1990, the, the union-wide law uh, on, 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 on media was adopted, which, which, which abolished censorship. So uh, all these publications were censored, unlike some is that, uh, uh, published by the dissidents in, in, in dozens or maybe hundreds of, of, of copies. And these, we are talking about uh, tens of thousands, later hundreds of thousands of copies, and, and uh, the popularity of these um, writers' publications exploded precisely because of these publications. And, and, and so Kravchuk, uh, Kravchuk negotiated, is that to be published? What, 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 uh, what corrections need to be made in that, in that document? And, 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 and um, uh, uh, the, the, the pressure from, 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 from below and the, the uh, concessions from above met in this publication. Then he went to, to, uh, he, he went to the founding congress of the Kiev regional organization in July. And so it was kind of a logical um, thing for him to come. It was, it was nothing new. But at the same time, of course, being there, uh, he was much less uh, tough, much less uh, uh, ruthless than, than, than a year or even half a year before. He, he recognized that Ruhi is important, that Ruhi is powerful, that Ruhi is representing, and a crucial thing, Ruhi is representing the, uh, the, the, the people. Communist Party claimed the, the uh, monopoly of representation before that, and then uh, uh, it um, uh, uh, kind of um, channeled part of that, uh, of, uh, of that representation to this writer's union or artist union only because of the party, of the party mandate, they were able to, 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 uh, to, 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 to speak publicly. And now Ruh claim independent authority, independent channel of representation, uh, in, uh, or source of representation. And Kravchuk, in, in fact, recognized that in his speech. And so uh, then he, he, he spoke almost like, like, like a partner, you know? And, and I, but, uh, but as I listened to this um, Polish uh, uh, talk uh, before lunch, uh, I re realized that Poles, of course, were much ahead of us. Um, uh, Ruch was not as strong as Solidarity, and in, in, in the election in, in, in March 2000, uh, 1990 showed that uh, uh, Ruch scored much, much worse than Solidarity. But uh, Ruch claimed independent authority. Uh, Ruch represented people, and party conceded that. And uh, uh, the, the, that atmosphere showed triumph of, uh, of, of, of this recognition. They, uh, cannot just beat us, they, they, uh, they realize we are partners in a way, they realize we, uh, 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 we, uh, we are almost the people. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, uh, as you said, that Kravchuk uh, demonstrated but, uh, uh, that he can uh, uh, be a, a part of this process, but I think he demonstrated it to Gorbachev, first of all, because uh, it was uh, 89 and nobody knew that uh, Soviet Union would be gone very soon. So I think uh, Kravchuk was uh, showing Gorbachev that he is a part of his team who, who will be uh, uh, like uh, doing, uh, the, who will be uh, executing Gorbachev's perestroika. And also the, uh, the title of, um, uh, of Ruch was that it was a movement for, for perestroika to support the Gorbachev's program. Uh, and uh, it looks like the, um, that uh, Gorbachev is a very important figure also that we haven't started talking about. And uh, um, uh, when I uh, s started, like, um, uh, when I became a historian and I started reading books about Gorbachev, so for me Gorbachev looks like a very uh, idealist, revolutionary leader who was a true communist and who wanted to start it all from the beginning, to go back to the 1917 and build uh, uh, the true communism, the state of uh, all people equal. Uh, and he was also the representative of, uh, of Soviet intelligentsia. Uh, but what about you at the time? Did you uh, support Gorbachev? Did you believe uh, in his program? And uh, was Ruch from the beginning, uh, 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 was it all about to support Gorbachev or was it not about uh, the, this program of perestroika at all? Uh, let me correct you f uh, from the beginning. Uh, for Kravchuk, it was not so much as demonstrating something to Gorbachev. Kravchuk was too far below to, uh, to, to send signals directly to Gorbachev. Kravchuk w was a minor, fi uh, 
like medium medium level figure at the Ukrainian Communist Party. So mm -hmm. w what he w w w what he cared primarily was to demonstrate to Shcherbetsky, then mm -hmm. uh, number one at Ukrainian Communist Party, that he was loyal, uh, capable. Uh, and uh, kind of irreplaceable in this capacity to communicate with, with the opposition. Uh, and Sherbetsky was much more conservative, as I mentioned, than, uh, uh, than Gorbachev. So Gorbachev um, wanted, I, I'm not quite sure he was so idealistic. He, 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 he would have been unable to, to, to advance to the very top if he, if he had been so idealistic. That was not happening in the Soviet Union, no. But um, uh, he wanted he wanted uh, to, 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 to to conduct some reforms. He wanted uh, he wanted to have less less um, repression, less control, and, 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 and more dialogue and, 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 and more more socialism rather than Stalinism. That's that's for sure. Uh, he recognized that the uh, planning economy uh, 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 planning economy was not uh, properly performing, and he wanted uh, to introduce some competition and 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 and, 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 ma and, and some market uh, elements. And um, uh, Kravchuk, uh, Kravchuk was part of the com of the uh, leadership of the Ukrainian Communist Party, which was more conservative, and um, uh, he was among the more reformist elements in that conservative uh, echelon of, 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 of Ukrainian Communist Party. And, and he advanced very quickly during that year. Two weeks after uh, the uh, founding Congress of Ruch, Gorbachev himself came to Kiev to uh, preside over replacement of Sherbetsky with, uh, uh, with Volodymyr Ivashko. Uh, more, uh, 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 um, um, more reformist, but still uh, a bit of a hardliner uh, in Ukrainian Communist Party. So the era of Sherbitsky effectively ended with the founding Congress of Ruch. So uh, the era of Sherbitsky was uh, uh, about uh, um, repression, uh, containment of, of protest, of opposition, um, blocking uh, dangerous uh, influences from the Baltics or from Moscow, and that came to, uh, to, to an end with, with the founding Congress of Ruch, which showed that you cannot really, in a unified country, you cannot really control, because the, 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 the some is that literature was brought in, in, in bags from, from, from Vilnius. I, uh, yeah, to, to Kiev and to Lviv. Uh, the uh, ideas flew that directly with, with um, this Tolstoy <coughs> journal, uh, the thick, uh, thick um, uh, journals from, from Moscow, Novi Mir and 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 and, 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 and everything else. So uh, you, you, you could not really control that. And um, uh, your, about your question uh, regarding me personally, uh, First, I'm not quite sure what I thought back then. Uh, I don't want to mythologize. Uh, time, time is running, and you know, it, it is so tempting to say, I always believe the right thing, yeah? Uh, uh, I might say, um, I, was, I, 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 I was changing my opinion um, several times. Five years before, that, seven years before that, I was expelled from the Cave University for nationalist activities. I was a member of student organization. Uh, which wanted independent Ukraine, and but which also kind of uh, uh, flirted with, with um, um, uh, far left uh, terrorist uh, activities in Europe. So, what, what, what's happening? Uh, uh, in the first panel, we heard uh, about ideas which we, 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 uh, which live in in in, a, in, a, in the head of a 15-year-old. In in 19-year-old, there are also some some bizarre ideas. Yeah, but uh, uh, very quickly after that, I I I, I abandoned this um, the, uh, this uh, uh, radical leftism uh, completely. But at the same time, I I I, I remain I remained loyal to the idea of Ukraine. But of course, I realized it was impossible. In, I, that the year was uh, uh, 1982, you know, the, the, uh, half, a year, half a year after I, I was kicked off the University, Brezhnev died, but uh, Andropov came, you know, e e even, even more ruthless, even more, even more conservative. So um, when Perestroika came, uh, as many other people, I couldn't believe uh, what was happening. I, 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 I didn't really expect to leave to those times when that would be possible. And that 
feeling was with me for, 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 for several years at least, you know. Every day something was happening which, which seemed impossible the day before. And um, uh, Gorbachev was, uh, was not really my hero. I uh, was very glad he was elected and he was doing what he was doing. But by then my, uh, my distrust of the regime and the, of the party was so deep, even of course unspoken, uh, that I could not really respect him, le le let alone admire him, you know. It was, it was something I accepted as very beneficial to, my, to, 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 uh, to Ukraine and, and, and to me and, and, and to the whole Soviet Union. I, I was very glad that th that, that, that was um, succeeding and that was kind of expanding. Um, many people believed like that. I remember talks became, uh, became um, freer at that time. You, 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 could, you could discuss the scene not, ju not just in the kitchen, but uh, at all those meetings in the, uh, in the uh, writers' union, and uh, in 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 uh, 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 1989, uh, I uh, together with students at the Kiev University, my friends and and and, and their friends, uh, established a student organization called Hromada, and so we 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 had a lot of talks there. Uh, nobody, I I remember clearly admired Gorbachev. Maybe some older people at the time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, it was he, uh, he, he was a useful figure, uh, smart figure, uh, preferred to to Uk to Sherbetsky and to, to to bosses of Ukrainian Communist Party, but not not, not really my hero. At the Congress, uh, people who respected Gorbachev, maybe admired him, met with people who accepted him <coughs> as, as a helpful figure, but could not respect or admire anybody from the Communist Party dissidents. So uh, th the task was to formulate such a message which would support Gorbachev against, against the leaders of the Ukrainian Communist Party, uh, against these um, uh, shadows of Stalin, you know, against those who they claim Stalinist, you know, like Sherbetsky, um, at the same time, uh, n to allow the space for more radical opposition, including uh, political pluralism with Communist Party as just one player rather than the dominant player, rather than the arbiter with Ukrainian independence become one of the options on the table, something Gorbachev uh, uh, didn't recognize until the very end. So at that time, different voices appeared in, in, in that hall. Uh, different messages, uh, the messages were expressed and sent and, 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 and kind of processed. And the resolutions of the Congress went clearly beyond this idea of perestroika, perestroika project as, as, as expressed by Gorbachev even at that time, eh, may, maybe even a, a year later. Uh, some uh, of the speakers clearly uh, called for Ukraine's independence. S uh, some limited themselves to confederation, which Gorbachev didn't, uh, didn't accept until, until the very uh, uh, last months of the Soviet Union when, when it was too late. Yeah? So definitely uh, the, uh, the um, call for derisification of Ukraine, so more Ukrainian language, more Ukrainian culture, limiting the legacy of, of Russification policies in, in, in Ukraine was something Gorbachev would never accept. So uh, even, even with regard to, to, to the market economy, some calls were more radical, uh, although I must say that Ruch was not very strong on economy, you know, so, so uh, because there were so many writers there, so they, they, they were more about talks uh, rather than, 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 than economy. But, but uh, independence or confederation, Ukrainian language, uh, uh, political pluralism, that was uh, way beyond the Gorbachev's project of perestroika. Okay, so it looks like it was uh, a split already in the party that made it possible, the, the entire uh, Ruch movement, that it was like Gorbachev as a reformist and there were this uh, old guard who were like, who wanted to keep it, uh, like to keep the status quo. Um, 
Uh, and uh, it's interesting for me because, that, uh, because I, I actually didn't even know that already in this, um, uh, in uh, 89, there were uh, people who were speaking at this Congress about the Ukrainian independence. I thought it appeared much later, but it's interesting to know that, there, that it was there already and uh, Gorbachev just underestimated the, uh, the power of this movement that, uh, and uh, he, he of course couldn't predict what's gonna happen in, in two years. Um, yeah, but uh, it's also uh, uh, about what you talked about, uh, Russification. Um, that was uh, 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 my, imp my, I remember very well uh, being as a child in Kiev and uh, I was Ukrainian speaking, my parents are Ukrainian speaking and uh, it was kind of not very pleasant feeling uh, when uh, you are in a bus or in a subway and everybody is just like putting finger on you and, uh, and like say, hey, oh wow, your Ukrainian is so good, you're, uh, you're speaking Ukrainian. And um, that was something that I experienced during my entire childhood and especially it was not very pleasant <coughs> when I went to school uh, at this uh, outskirts of the city and I was the only child who uh, spoke Ukrainian uh, in, in, uh, in a classroom. Um, so uh, uh, it's like r Russian language and Ukrainian language was a, uh, like one of the main topics there. Uh, but what do you think about what happened with this uh, issue of language uh, after 1991? Do you think um, uh, it was um, how it was used for the political purposes later? Do you think maybe there is um, something uh, wrong maybe even uh, with this, uh, how Ruch presented the Ukrainian language as something crucial for being Ukrainian. Uh, and can you t tell a little bit more how, what uh, did you expect uh, uh, to change in, in 1989? How do you see the language policy at that time? Uh, it, was, it was in some respects regrettable, but it was inevitable. Uh, remember, they were writers. For them, language was an instrument. Language was what they were, yeah? Uh, so uh, they realized that the scope of uh, the space of Ukrainian language is shrinking in Ukraine, and that means that their space of existence was shrinking, their, their space of, of um, social uh, capacity was shrinking. If uh, nobody was, was, was willing to read Ukrainian, what would, they, wh what would happen of them? Yeah, they would, they would become a kind of extras, no, 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 um, um, useless. So uh, they f fought very resolute, uh, resolutely, very adamantly that um, th th that process of uh, Russification um, and their ideas came uh, mostly from the 20s. Uh, in, uh, th they say they, they, they were not fighting. They were not fighting the Soviet regime. They were uh, fighting Stalinist distortion of the original Leninist design of the Soviet regime. Yeah. So the coming back to Lenin. Uh, 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 that was what Gorbachev's perestroika was actually um, uh, about. Yeah, uh, as it was officially pronounced. So in, in this way, they were together with Gorbachev, uh, except that of course Gorbachev uh, was embracing. Uh, language and cultural dimension of, of Stalinist uh, Russification fully. He didn't want to, to, to fight back any Russification, uh, uh, but b the Bolts and Georgians and, and, and Ukrainians, of course, uh, wanted that. And uh, uh, language laws were adopted in, in all republics, in, including in Ukraine, again, a month after the founding Congress of Ruch, uh, still before the competitive election of, of March uh, 1990, uh, the, the fully communist control uh, uh, parliament of Ukrainian Soviet, Soviet Republic adopted a, a language law which proclaimed Ukrainian the sole state language. Yeah. So that was, the, the, the again, another, another part of this uh, change of events ha happening in other parts of the Soviet Union than, um, um, uh, uh, than moving to Ukraine. Uh, the Bolt started, uh, started that uh, a year before. So uh, that represented uh, their understanding uh, that you can uh, have a multi-ethnic society with uh, different ethnicities and different languages, but full correspondence or nearly full correspondence between ethnicity and language. What Ruch fought was not presence of Russian language or presence of ethnic Russians in Ukraine. They fought uh, embrace by ethnic Ukrainians 
of Russian as their first language, which is what Russification was about, yeah? So there are ethnic Russians, and, and it's okay that they speak Russian. What, not, what is not okay if ethnic Ukrainians start speaking Russian as their first language, rather than sec just second language, yeah? So, uh, and, and in this way, uh, you, in Ukraine you had 72% of, uh, at the, uh, the last Soviet census of 1989, you have 72% of ethnic Ukrainians and 22% of ethnic Russians. If the percentages of languages were like that, Ruch would be fine with that. Unfortunately, in everyday practice, Russian was uh, at, uh, occupied at least 50 percent and I, 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 at that time we didn't know the figures because there were no sociological surveys to ask about that and censuses didn't ask about language of everyday use but ask about native language which was perceived as kind of a, a, a language of origin language of ethnicity or something like that rather than language of, of, of everyday use yeah so only in 1992, which, which widespread sociological surveys, we found that distribution was, was something like 48% for Ukrainian and 52% for Russian. So very different from ethnicity. And this dis discrepancy between ethnicity and language was something which Ruch attributed to the policy of Russification and wanted to revert uh, to the uh, original kind of design of the Soviet Union, to back to the 20s, back to, back to Lenin, yeah? Uh, Later on, dissidents corrected the writers and say, no, it started with Lenin. So you, 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 you don't want to go back to Lenin. You, ne you need to go back to before Lenin and then to, to before the Tsars, actually, before the Tsarist empire, if you want to go back to, to Ukraine of your dream, yeah? Uh, but uh, what they wanted was to uh, control the expansion of Russian, uh, promote, uh, make the state even the, par the Communist Party to promote Ukrainian, and this language law was one of the instruments of that promotion. Let's have the full might of the state promote Ukrainian as strongly as before that they promoted Russian. And in this way, we will come back to, uh, to the Ukraine of our dreams. And that was very problematic in the country, in the Republic, even after independence, when it was not, no longer part of the Soviet Union, uh, which was bilingual, by ethnic, and uh, with, with the Russian language spoken at least uh, by half of the population, and by more mobile, by younger, by more affluent part, uh, half of the population. So, uh, you, you know, politics is made in the cities. Po uh, economy is, 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 is dominated by the young and affluent, and uh, m socially mobile, and, 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 and they were primarily Russian speakers. And that's why it was a very problematic, uh, problematic concept. It was inevitable, it was part of a, uh, a uh, uh, union-wide trend to, 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 to find Russification to, to promote local languages and, uh, uh, and, and cultures and, and, and histories and, 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 and uniqueness and identities. And uh, it started this long process which brought Impressive results, if you think about that. Ukrainian is no longer a marginalized language um, uh, in terms of social status, in, so, uh, in terms of symbolic values. If you look at Ukrainian language now, it is definitely recognized in Ukraine as the national language, as the symbolic uh, kind of value for, for all Ukrainians. But as a communicative instrument, it is, of course, uh, of limited value. It is nothing like, like, like German in Austria or, um, or, or, or uh, uh, French in France, yeah? It, 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 it is still, it is still um, kind of secondary to Russian in many social domains. It is still uh, of, um, uh, my, a minority language in the cities. But there is, again, this discrepancy between ethnicity and language. Ethnicity became a very fuzzy concept. The state d d no longer cares so much about ethnicity, but symbolically, if uh, you, the notion, the identity of Ukrainian became predominant in Ukraine. Uh, instead of 72%, you have now 92% of people who in the survey say they are Ukrainian. Uh, in, uh, we, we'll finally have a, a new census in uh, uh, 2020, and I believe at least 90% will say they are Ukrainian by nationality, whatever, whatever this concept is called. It will probably still called nationality. Uh, but uh, having, having accepted that they are Ukrainians, and having accepted that Ukrainian is somehow their language, many people are reluctant to say uh, they will abandon Russian, they will uh, 
come to, to come to speak Ukrainian as their only language. So people want to be free to use whatever language they want on one level. People want to be, a, uh, to be able to take advantage of, of uh, communicative uh, opportunities Russian gives, but at the same time, uh, uh, they are very reluctant to, to denigrate Ukrainian to the equal status of Russian. They want Ukrainian to be predominant, at least symbolically. And the, the real battle uh, um, in language uh, processes in Ukraine is whether Ukrainian will be only symbolically primary or also communicatively primary. That's, uh, this is the battle which, which is not ending and which probably will never end, in, uh, um, at least as long as we live. <laughs> Yeah, and basically, uh, what we can, uh, what we see uh, is that uh, in uh, uh, even in 1991, um, basically it was hard to define who you, who is Ukrainian. There was not a lot of debates about uh, what does it mean to be Ukrainian. So basically, everybody uh, who lived in the territory of Ukraine, no matter which language they sp uh, they spoke, uh, they received Ukrainian passports and they started to be Ukrainians. And then only after that, there, and there was a big this promise that uh, um, those uh, Ruch and uh, new, uh, new power, they're gonna build new democratic Ukraine. So it was the idea was that it's gonna be democratic, but at the same time, it's gonna be uh, uh, still, uh, it's gonna be Ukraine for Ukrainians. And here I think we already see some kind of limitations of this, um, uh, of this Ruch project, of this uh, um, political project of uh, new democratic Ukraine. And here we see why it, ha uh, why it uh, didn't work as it was supposed to work. Uh, first of all, and uh, how language was used for political purposes and uh, what, we, uh, what we saw later in 2014, 2015, how, uh, how language and what to be Ukrainian uh, became such a, uh, a dividing issue. You know, language cannot be uh, uh, apolitical. Language is political. Language is about identity. A language is about power in many societies, and so you, y it cannot be um, it cannot be uh, not used in politics. So it's it's only it's only natural, even though of course often often detrimental to social unity and social stability. Uh, but um, uh, coming back to to, uh, to to the definition of who is Ukrainian, we need to keep in mind that Ruch was, in a way a Soviet project in that it accepted uh, Soviet post-1920s, actually, Stalinist primordial understanding of ethnicity, uh, of nationality, yeah? So if you are Ukrainian, it's because your parents were Ukrainian, your ancestors were Ukrainian. That was the only criterion. It's not because you live there. Uh, you, could be, you could be living in Siberia or, or, or in Estonia and you would still be Ukrainian. That was the Soviet understanding. And that was understanding Ruch, um, uh, Ruch accepted. And, and, and I, uh, like I said, it wanted to bring language practice back in conformity with that primordial uh, understanding of ethnicity. And it worked that way as long as the Soviet U Union lived. And um, after that, uh, Ukraine gradually um, uh, 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 was gradually becoming a kind of normal uh, state where there is a correspondence not because uh, between your, your, your primordial uh, ethnicity and, and language, but be bet between your citizenship and language. Yeah, so uh, wh what is expected in, in, in all kind of normal states, yeah? Your, so everybody living in Ukraine was becoming Ukrainian, but not necessarily begin, uh, began, Im uh, became immediately, you know? So Ukraine inherited the Soviet kind of um, spectrum of ethnicities, uh, you, with Ukrainian ethnicity and Russian ethnicity and Crimean Tatar and Jews and, and Hungarians. And then gradually uh, they were all becoming Ukrainians, uh, meaning they accepted this understanding of uh, Ukrainianness in more and more, which, uh, which equated Ukrainianness with citizenship. So nationality uh, in, in the um, um, American uh, uh, Anglophone uh, meaning of the world, yeah? So it is still not, n not complete, but it, it is near completion now. My, my, my survey data shows that um, when people say they're Ukrainian by nationality, increasingly they, 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 they do not mean inheritance, they, they, uh, uh, they mean citizenship and their self-perception. But uh, this is part of a larger dynamics which Ruch uh, was part of and, and, and uh, in a way 
uh, an unresolved uh, dilemma of relationship between nationalism and democracy. Ruch was, on the one hand, a democratic project, a project of dismantled totalitarian empire and establishing the, uh, the, the power of the people, as, as, as in many uh, other events of 1989 that we, uh, we are talking about today. On the other hand, it was about uh, reclaiming this Wirzind, uh, I'm Polk, yeah, so uh, this nationhood of, of Ukrainians, which was, which was not taken for granted in the Ukrainian um, uh, SSR as a part of the, of the, of the Union uh, uh, state, yeah. So that was about creating a new nation which would be uh, a new people, so uh, based on citizenship. On the, one hand, uh, on the other hand, there was this project of, of, of uh, uh, in continuing this um, the primordial understanding. So this the dynamic meant that Ukraine for Ukrainians, that was the, the slogan one of the dissident le leaders, Vyacheslav Chornovil, took issue with exactly at, at the Congress and say, if we mean that, uh, uh, that you, um, uh, th that I in Ukraine the power should belong to, uh, to, to uh, uh, colonial or whatever, um, imperial nomenclature. Of course, Ukraine for Ukrainians, they should be ki uh, kicked out. If we mean these workers uh, who came to Ukraine to work as a part of this Soviet migration project, let them stay in Ukraine, let them enjoy the full, uh, the full uh, scope of, of, of civic rights. So uh, that was a very difficult dynamic, how to embrace everybody without losing the national uniqueness, national distinction of Ukraine and, 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 and national language of Ukraine. And so this uh, dilemma is not resolved to, to this day. So th this is about something Ruch started and which, which lives with us for these 30 years. Um. Do we still have time for? No. no. <laughs> no <that's laughs> so do you start no, no. <laughs> for like for like ten minutes, I felt tempted to to ask a question about the our subtitle, a precursor to the collapse of the Soviet Union, because 1989 uh, really is a, 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 a very different year for Ukraine than for me, for most of the other countries that we're discussing today. It, uh, 89 is maybe not the rev revolutionary year, but it m might be significant in in the sense of being a precursor to the collapse of the Soviet Union. I would have wanted uh, to hear a bit more about that as well, but I, it was it was very interesting as it as it was, and I had no chance to interfere, so I, I gave up. It's all fine, but now I think we have to stop because otherwise we get a delay for the other programs. So thanks to both of you, to Katarina and to Volodymyr. Thank you. Thank you.